This is so exciting. I am suiting up here and getting ready to feed the sea turtles. Come on, let's go. All right. All right, so you're going to face me on your way down. Two hands. Step at a time, perfect. All right, well, here we are. We are actually floating on top of the Ocean Realm exhibit. And behind me, I can see sharks, stingrays, fish, and actually the largest creature in this tank, sea turtles. And I'm here with my friend Carrie, and she's going to tell us about these amazing creatures right here behind me. Carrie, tell me about the sea turtles. Well, there are seven species of sea turtles in the ocean. We have two of them actually right here in Ocean Realm. Carrie, where can we find sea turtles? Uh, sea turtles are going to be found anywhere where the water's a little bit warmer, in the Atlantic, in the Pacific. So, Carrie, tell me exactly what kind of sea turtles we have here in this exhibit. Here in Ocean Realm, we have two kinds of sea turtles. There are seven that are out in the ocean. One of them's called the green sea turtle, and one of them's called the loggerhead sea turtle. So, what makes a green sea turtle a green sea turtle? Green sea turtles actually are have green fat in their bodies because they eat turtle breast, which is green, so it makes them green fat. That makes sense. And the other turtle was called? The loggerhead sea turtle. And why are they called a loggerhead sea They have a very, very large, broad head is why they call them loggerhead sea turtles. Huh. So when I think of sea turtles, or turtles in general, really, I think of them as old and slow moving and kind of the wise creatures of the world. Is there truth to that? They are old. They can get to be up to 40 to 100 years old is wow. what they've seen. And when they're swimming, they do move relatively slow because they're so big, right? They do. How big do they actually get? Well, some can reach up to 1,000 pounds. Wow. However, ours are about 350 to 400 pounds. Are you guys ready? We are going to feed the sea turtles. Come on. So I know that fish can swim under the water for as long as they want because they breathe underwater. With gills. But turtles have a special way of breathing. They breathe just like you and I. Yes, they do. Right? Tell they me have, about that. They, they have lungs just like you and I, and they can go down underwater and sleep for a certain amount of time, and then just like you and I, they need to come up for breath. So they actually hold their breath and sleep underwater? They do. For how long can they last underwater? I think it's probably about Three to 10 minutes they can usually sleep underwater. What has made these sea turtles endangered? Well, Alex, a lot of things are making them endangered. A few of them, fishermen are catching them in their nets and they're getting injured that way. Pollution can injure them through get, ingesting anything. Also littering, garbage, they get soda wrappers wrapped around their head and they can suffocate. That's why it's so important not to pollute. It can help save these beautiful creatures of the sea. This is my friend Mary, and she's going to tell us a little bit about what we can find in the shark tank. Well, welcome, Alex. I'm so happy to see you here. So behind me in this shark tank, there are three different types of sharks. We have sandbar, sand tiger, and nurse sharks. Now, when I think of sharks, the first thing I think about is that big mouth and those really sharp teeth. Exactly. They do need teeth so they can eat just like me and you do, Alex. These guys like to eat fish. That's typically what we feed them here at Adventure Aquarium. A shark, depending on the species, they can have between 100 to 300 teeth. Our sharks in our shark realm, they typically lose one tooth a day. So they can typically go through 20,000 to 30,000 teeth in a lifetime. Wow, almost 300 teeth in one shark mouth. Tell me a little bit about those fins that we always associate with the shark. I can tell the difference between them is if I look at their dorsal fins, and those are the fins that you're seeing when you're on your boat. So we can tell the different sharks part by looking at their fins. Exactly. Our sandbar sharks, they have two different sized dorsal fins, and then our sand tiger sharks, they have the same size dorsal fins. I heard there's an amazing hammerhead shark here at the Adventure Aquarium. Now, most sharks have that pointy kind of snout, but a hammerhead shark is different. We do have two species, the bonnethead and the great hammerhead. The great hammerhead, um, his face is called a cephalofoil. And are their eyes actually on the sides of their head? Exactly. Why? 
It actually helps them being able to see a lot better. They have a bigger range of view. What does the hammerhead like to eat? Stingrays. Stingrays. Wow. Do you feed them live stingrays? We actually do not feed them stingrays. We feed them fish, also uh, large pieces of squid as well. Cool. There are many different types of sharks, and one of the best ways to identify them is to look at the colors and patterns on their skin. What makes each shark actually have different colors, whether it's polka dots or stripes? It helps them just blend into their surroundings. That way, bigger sharks or something else won't try to eat them. Now, can you tell us a little bit about their bones and what makes them be able to wiggle and move so smoothly? Their skeleton is made out of cartilage, so like the wiggly parts of your nose. It helps them be able to bend and twist and move when going after their prey. Hmm. Well, it certainly looks like that when you watch them. Next up on our sea life adventure is a visit to the Stingray Beach Club. So what do we have here? Welcome to Stingray Beach Club, Alex. Awesome. There are 200 species of stingrays. Some live in saltwater, some live in freshwater. We have four amazing saltwater species in our exhibit here today. Can I touch these? Exactly, just two fingers along their backs. Here they come. Oh, I got it spin. <laughs> They're kind of slimy. Exactly. That slime actually helps eliminate slack, so it actually makes it a little bit easier for them to swim in the water. It looks like they're flying. It does look like they're flying. They move their wings up and down, kind of like a bird. Yeah, look at that. They're flapping away. Such a unique shape. The ones that are round and flat, they typically hang out at the bottom of the ocean where it's really sandy. Yeah. But then our cow nose rays, the ones that are shaped kind of more like a kite, those guys like to hang out more in the middle of the water column, so they will keep moving. It looks like that's the biggest one you have in here. You're absolutely correct. He is our leopard whip tail ray. Whoop! <laughs> <laughs> now, he is literally covered in leopard spots. You got it. Those leopard spots actually help him blend into surroundings, just like the sharks that touch a shark. Right. What do these guys eat? That's a good question, Alex. They like to eat things like crustaceans, so like a crab or fish. OK, well, look at them. They definitely do like to splash just like we would if we were out in the ocean or in a swimming pool. Yeah, he's giving me a high five. <laughs> he just came right up to me. <laughs> Let's see if we can do a high five with the stingray. Oh, I think maybe this one. High five! <laughs> do they sting with that tail or what? How does that help them swim? What's it there for? So their tail is used so they can kind of navigate around in the water. They sting with something that's called a barb. It um, comes to a point and serrated on both sides. They don't go out and hunt with it. They use it just sheer protection. Most times when humans get stung by a stingray, it's when we accidentally step on them. Right. So we typically get our injuries from our foot, our ankle, or our legs. But I have never been stung by one of these stingrays before. Do they have teeth in those mouths? They do have teeth. These guys actually grind up their food. Stingrays are at the top of my list for favorite creatures. On my way to the Touch a Shark exhibit, where I'll be able to touch and feel these amazing sea creatures. <laughs> so Mary, this looks so exciting. Where are we right now? We are right now, we are in, um, at Touch a Shark. Touch a Shark? That's right, Touch a Shark. Ah! You're not a fish, are you? I'm definitely not a fish. Well, then you have nothing to worry about. The water's kind of warm, and I've got my two fingers. I'm about to touch the shark. Whoa! Wow. It feels kind of like sandpaper. That's correct, Alex. They are covered in little teeny tiny little teeth. They're called dermal denticles. Little teeth? Wow. So this one is all brown, and the one next to it is covered in stripes. Are they two different kinds of sharks? Exactly. So the one you were touching is called a Mexican horn shark, and her friend laying next to her is a white-spotted bamboo shark. All right, so they're about this long, 
And you said these are fully grown sharks. Exactly. So they're not going to get much bigger than this. Nope, only 20% of sharks actually get bigger than us humans. Most of them are either our size or smaller. So where can we find these sharks in the wild? Certainly, so our white spotted bamboo sharks and our brown banded bamboo sharks, you can find them in coastal waters in Indonesia, Thailand, and um, Japan. Far away from here, huh? Far away from here. And how about this brown shark? Where can you find sure. him? Sure, our Mexican horn shark, you can find her in the Western Pacific. Stop. 